All righty. So today on the Cosmic Keys podcast, I'm really excited to be talking with Jackie Jolie, who is a certified quantum healer. Is that the correct title? Health coach. Healer. Health coach. Yeah. Health coach. <laughs> I got both skill sets. Yeah. So um, Jackie, I recently heard on Higher Side Chats with Greg, Greg Carlwood. Um, and she, in that episode, kind of went over what she's studying and um, related to sun exposure, vitamin D, circadian rhythm, and how the sun and light is affecting your overall health. Just from that conversation, um, I quickly started implementing the basic techniques and suggestions that Jackie presented. And let me tell you, I'm noticing the difference. I mean, I, I'm living it right now and just wanted to get her on the show right away to talk to her about all of these really powerful techniques of basic health that involves basically the sun, you know, getting your body and your skin and your eyes exposed to light throughout the day and keeping your circadian rhythm in check in order for like overall health and overall immunity. So I've got tons of questions on my mind for Jackie and I'm just really stoked to be living these techniques, you know, kind of for a little bit here and to just like learn more today. So welcome to the show, Jackie, and thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to share the light. <laughs> yeah, totally. So if anyone's watching the video, my face is pretty fried. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, good sun today. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's, I'm in Denver and it's super warm and hot and sunny. Um, and I do have some Irish skin, so I get burned really easily. But um, basically, the, the things that I've been doing that Jackie recommended have just been getting up early in the morning around sunset, getting outside around, or I'm sorry, around sunrise, getting up around sunrise, getting outside, getting my skin in the kind of like ambient light of the morning, and then going through the day and then going to bed on time when the sun you know, shortly after the sun sets and keeping my house dark after the sun sets. And it's kind of crazy, but it's a very basic thing that, you know, I'm really noticing the effects and the differences. So I'm, I'm kind of spoiling all the information Jackie's going to present today, but I just wanted to throw it out there that like, it's pretty basic stuff and I've been actually doing it. And that's why I'm kind of excited to like share this information with the audience. So Jackie, for people who don't know you, can you give us a little info on your background and what got you into this field that you're teaching this now? Yeah, it's a great place to start. Um, so I'm actually an equine body worker as my big girl full-time career. Uh, so I do basically a physical therapist for horses and dogs. And because of that career for the last 10 years, um, I've always kind of followed holistic, natural kind of practices with my health, um, not usually taking a lot of medications or pharmaceuticals, um, getting massages, getting body work, doing yoga, um, spending time outdoors, um, which I was always kind of outside and I work outside. So I thought I was healthy, which I probably was more healthier than maybe some average um, Americans, but um I had a big wake up call about three years ago and I got Lyme disease. And, you know, initially when you get Lyme disease, you do think tick and it's something that's put upon you because you get this disease from a tick. And of course I had the same process and thinking thoughts. And uh, the doctors of course, just want to put you on antibiotics for three months. And then if that doesn't work, they just give you another three months of antibiotics to try to fix it. And um, it just didn't resonate with me. I was like, that doesn't sound like that works. And I'd already had a couple people reach out that had had Lyme and healed it naturally. And they were like, you don't want to do the antibiotics. It's just going to suppress your system. And then obviously mess up your gut. And uh, so I started working with a naturopath. I found Stephen Buner as well, Dr. Stephen Buner. He's a herbalist and I followed his protocol for herbal tinctures to heal my Lyme disease. And the naturopath that I first started working with was the first person to kind of plant some seeds about a light life. And he revolved it around the sun and um, seeing the sunrise and getting out and grounding. And I was like, okay, yeah, but you hear that and you kind of think like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, will it really make like that big a difference? And I was already working outside. So I was like, I get sun, I lay out, I go to the beach. I'm, I'm good. Um, so I kind of heard this, the inkling, but I didn't follow it per se. Um, 
I had a very good friend of mine that has always been an angel in my life that looked out for me. And he got on to Dr. Jack Cruz's information. And Dr. Jack Cruz has been a huge pioneer of this information on quantum health, which is actually the three pillars are light, water, and magnetism. I've just been focusing on teaching light for the moment because nobody knows about it. And light really is the foundation that's even involved in water and magnetism. Um, so I kind of took a big, deep rabbit hole dig down his work, um, other doctors that were starting to talk about it. And it did hit really hard. Um, the truth kind of resonates at a certain frequency and level that when we hear it, we just, we just know, even if it might be things that we don't want to hear, <laughs> we know. Um, and so I was like, well, what the hell? Like, let me try it. I've tried diets. I've tried food. I've tried exercise. I've tried tons of supplements. I've spent $5,000 a year on my health for the last five years that I could have had saved up. Um, so I'm about two and a half years into, I'd say like a healthier light life or quantum health style. Um, the results are miraculous, actually, like it will just change your life. Um, I already was seeing results within a couple of weeks as far as energy was concerned. I saw results in 30 days of actually getting hungry in the morning. I was never a person that ate in the morning, but I was never getting up and seeing the sunrise either. Um, and since then, I mean, my Lyme is gone and it has stayed away. Um, my blood work is great. My libido and hormones that all hit the floor after Lyme have all started to come back into healthy ranges. And I can feel that, um, energy is abundant. And then kind of a bonus is some type of consciousness level has really heightened in me. I've, that's a whole different story and podcast for another life, but I've struggled with the concept of faith and certain things for a while and something has changed and it's really wonderful um and this is the information that people need because it really empowers you it gets you back in touch with your body of how it feels and how it resonates with things and there's just nothing better than connecting back with nature really it is very simple some of these habits and lifestyle changes might seem like a big deal but they are very simple and very easy and then the compounding factor of the effects you're going to get off of it are just tenfold um, and it doesn't cost any money and it doesn't require you to go to the doctor or have health insurance. Um, and so I think it's really important to start teaching this. And that's kind of how I got into everything. I ended up getting certified last year as a quantum health coach through Quantum Biology Collective, if anybody's interested in that. Um, and since then, I've been holding local seminars, Zoom webinars, and trying to land podcast interviews to just get this information out to the masses. So thank you. Yeah, totally. Um... It's just one of those things these days when it comes to health and health information. And I mean, honestly, even laws re related to like vaccination and things like that, like our, our lifestyle and our world is so, so disconnected from nature that I feel like these days, you know, I'm 35 and like, I'm, I'm thinking these days, like almost everything that I was taught growing up and my lifestyle that I was raised on, like processed foods, I don't know, basic things are, are basically what's killing us. And only a couple generations back, some of these things didn't even exist, but I'm, I'm, I'm really focusing in these days on just like the fact that we've got to change everything fundamentally about the way we live in order to like get back on track. And it's kind of hard because I feel like I'm almost offending people when I call out certain things, because it's like, what are you talking about? Like I was raised on Kellogg's, like I ate breakfast every morning, I'm but it's fine. like, yeah, I'm fine. Or like, you know, so many different things related to like pharmaceuticals and diet are really hard to break the norm with. And, and some of the stuff that you talk about is even just like, don't wear sunscreen and that triggers people like I, I know who not to say that in front of because <laughs> yeah. that and, and I mean here I am with like a tomato face I, I am sunburned but um you know a couple days from now it, it just kind of like clears out and becomes like tan and then eventually pale because I am kind of Irish but um yeah I, I don't know if you have any thoughts on just like the the norms of kind of breaking these established norms to change it and how it triggers people because that's my observation these days about this type of mm. I don't know health topics yeah Ooh, that's a loaded question <laughs> um <laughs> yeah my mind is always there obviously since I've been more holistic more than I've been signing up for big pharma um as we know people get really tied to their ideologies and their beliefs um 
people also like that's a perfect example of well I've eaten Kellogg's my whole life and I'm fine I don't I don't have cancer I'm not dying I'm I'm fine well you'll hear that from maybe like a 35 year old or a 40 year old and yeah like it hasn't really caught up to them yet but the problem is big pharma and our modern medicine for one example has normalized everything so they've normalized any type of symptoms or decline in our health that might be like something minor but that's your body giving you a warning sign so for example in this talk usually i'll tell people you know i look around now and there's so many people with prescription glasses on right when i was in high school i don't ever remember seeing many people with eyeglasses on and now it's everywhere and children and teenagers i've got a couple cousins that have been wearing them since they were 15. first of all they're expensive as hell <laughs> and that's our society. Well, your eyesight's declining. We don't ask why is the eyesight declining? We say, oh, well, your eyesight's declining. Guess what? We invented these glasses that you can pay for and just wear them for the rest of your life. And they're actually going to decline your eyesight even more, by the way. Um, and so that's just one example. You know, I've ran into women now in their 18s, 18 year old, 20s, late 20s, and they're already being diagnosed as premenopausal. Like, that's insane. And they just go, oh, yeah, I've got to get on this medication, that medication, and like my hormones are there and I barely have a period. Like, what? So our ancestors, their eyesight's never declined, you know, until maybe they were 80 or 90, you know, as they really got old. There's women that are still in hunter-gatherer tribes right now that have their period into their 50s and 60s, having babies into their 60s and 70s, which I know most modern Americans would probably not want that. Um, but it just shows that we literally have the capability of being vital, like vital human beings with strength and energy and wanting to do things and initiation. Um, until the day that we literally drop dead, not discounting, you know, accidents, of course, that happen, uh, but just our normal, regular cycle of life. And it's kind of hard to get that point across because now people have gotten so used to what the norm is and so used to what the system is. And also most people don't even know what it feels like to feel good anymore, like really good. Um, you know, they think that like, the milkshake at Arby's is like the best milkshake they've ever had in their life. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, let me make you some with my goat milk and like real ice cream and some egg yolks. <laughs> um, so that's a big difference. Now, getting it to try to change is definitely difficult. Um, I think it's something that we have an issue with even in the conspiracy theory culture of like, when's everybody going to stand up and when are we going to take to the streets and when are we going to make change? Well, people are too tired and sick to do anything. We get done with our 60, 80 hour work week and we come home and we, you know, binge watch Netflix, no judgment. Like I watch Netflix too. Um, but it's all that we have the energy for. And we're not even realizing that the blue light then coming from that Netflix and TV screen is what's making us fatter, sicker, more tired, diabetic, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. Um, and so really I don't have the answer of how to change those mindsets. As we know, you kind of got to deal with each person individually, how they come along. What I try to implement now is practicing the practices that I know that work for me, which is the sun and being the person that I want to be and the change that I want to see in the world. And that energy eventually floods over and people are like, man, you've got a magic about you. You've got energy. You've got this. Like, what are you doing? Like, you're so dark, even in the winter. Like, you look great. Your body looks like, what are you doing? Everybody wants to know that because that energy eventually grabs them and they want to be like that. They want to be joyful. They want to be happy. They want to be bouncing around like Tigger with so much endless energy. And the light's what does it. So really at the end of the day, my best advice would be to heal yourself. So then that we all can heal because we're all connected on that level. And so as you heal yourself and become vibrating at a higher frequency due to the light, it's going to flood over. And, um, and again, as people try it, just like you said yourself, you've only been trying a few things for like maybe two weeks and you can already feel some differences. So if you can just get people to like, hey, just, just go see the sunrise a couple of times a week and, you know, put on some blue blocking glasses and just try, just try that and see. And they're going to feel different. Um, placebo effect or not, like it's going to happen. So that would be my best advice at that question. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a good answer. Um, and yeah, everything you said, I mean, just for like the, the baseline of feeling good, um, you know, so many people, myself included, like I, I can only speak for myself, but I know that over the years, depending on my lifestyle, 
like the baseline can just be like you feel tired and like shit all the time and weirdly there's been times in my life and I've always just been like considered myself a night owl um there's just been times in my life for like throughout the day it's like a drag and then when the sun goes down and the blue light comes on you almost feel like a little gremlin like that's when your energy comes up and it's effed up but um and honestly um throughout this conversation I'm probably going to be asking a lot of specific questions mainly because um the type of work I do these days I'm in a band and that requires like work working after hours into the late night sometimes and I've got to say even recently when um you know I went from playing in a band kind of after work and then having forced being forced to get up for my day job then when I quit the day job and did the band full time I I slipped into like a really nocturnal lifestyle and got depressed like straight up I, I even talked about it on the show like it, it was in July and it was honestly like sleeping until noon to 1 PM. And it's like, Oh, well, this is just normal for your lifestyle. Um, but by like switching, like forcing myself out of that, I definitely, definitely feel the differences. Um, so, so it's all, it's like really a personal thing because like, I, I feel like it's, it's part of something that you like associate with your personality. Like, Oh, I'm just a night owl or, or I like come alive when the sun goes down. Yeah. But um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on on that in general, just on like people that are either like in the industry or people that consider themselves night owls, um, kind of what what's wrong with that? <laughs> um, I don't like to necessarily always tell people that they're wrong or that they're right. It's our mm. options that we're making in life. Um, from the research that's been done, as far as I know, on like DNA and our ancestrals and all of that. There's really no been, there's never really been a true night out. It's not what our DNA and our genes are designed for. Um, It's not how they function. Our ancestors before we lived in modern indoor lifestyle would have been completely dark at night um, around predators on farms and out in the woods, which we don't have either per se. Um, And so let me explain a little bit of the science, just in case some of your listeners haven't heard like the THC podcast. Um, When we're outside, like I am now, you're getting a full spectrum of light from the sun. Um, And the full spectrum just means Roy G. Biv, like back in elementary school, like the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. And we're only able to actually see like 30% of the full spectrum. So that's kind of the idea behind quantum. There's a lot of things that we can't always see and feel per se, but we do have a physiological effect of. Um, so briefly, like as the sun comes up as sunrise, you're going to get, uh, only like red and infrared orange wavelengths that are very healing. Um, they help with inflammation. They help calm the brain. Um, and then as the sun starts to get to above 30 degrees, it's going to start bringing in more blue light and more of the UV light, depending on your area and location in the world as well. Uh, but like down South for me, it's, it's pretty early that blue light that comes in the middle of the day, um, depending on where you're located. Um, it's stimulating, right? So in the wild, we would have needed that. That's telling you to wake up and your body's going to make cortisol and make adrenaline and make your sex hormones to get everything like ramped up and going because we might have to go hunt a tiger or build a new TP or, you know, have a baby, whatever the daily tasks were cooking, anything like that. Um, and then on the flip side, as the sun starts to go down, it goes in reverse to where you're going to lose some of that blue light and you're going to only get the red and infrared and orange waves that are healing again. Um, and also tells your body, oh, it's about to be nighttime. I need to shut down the cortisol, the blood sugar, the adrenaline and start making um, a hormone called uh, melatonin. And that's what helps us get sleepy. It's what helps us run our regenerative um, programs at night. We can get into that later if you'd like. Um, and then that's basically what happens. Once you go to sleep, you're supposed to get that good sleep at night and be waking up automatically at sunrise before sunrise. Everybody's a little different. Uh, but once you get into that program, if you're waking up that early and you go out and do a bunch of stuff for the day, like you're tired at night when the night comes around. However, now we do have this modern lifestyle where we've had light that was produced. So electricity was only around for the last like 150 years, which sounds like a long time, but not really considering our ancestors not having it before. And then in the last uh, 40 years or so, fluorescent and LED bulbs came out. In the last two decades, we've had tech screens, um, which were copied kind of from like the casino lines of knowing that the blue light 
by itself is very, very addicting um, and very, very stimulating. And so when we get blue light by itself, so remember in nature, you always have all full spectrum, like it's 43% red and infrared all day long. You get more of the red and infrared in the morning and in the afternoon, but during the middle of the day, you get some blue light. So you do need that blue light with the rest of the spectrum to make hormones, make vitamin D, lower your blood pressure, lower um, cholesterol, have cholesterol to make your vitamin D, okay? So I don't want to make blue light like the bad guy, but blue light by itself is the bad guy. And so now in our modern life, nobody's getting up and going outside and seeing the sunrise. So they sleep in until eight, nine o'clock in the morning. They're going to get up. They're going to turn on their lights in the house, which are LED and fluorescent nowadays, which only emit blue light. Our windows, which are also modern in the houses and the offices that we work in, do not let in infrared and red light wavelengths. So they only let in blue light. So we're basically all blue light toxic. Um, those are all going to be stimulating to raise the cortisol way up high and start producing all that stuff for your adrenals to get fatigued and to get ran out. And then we're going to go into our office, which is probably also lit by fluorescent lights or LED light bulbs. Uh, back into the car, back into the home, and then in front of tech screens at night when it's dark outside, your body's not getting any signaling now that's told it, hey, it's turning dark. We need to flip all those other switches from the morning hormones and cortisol to turn it off and start making melatonin to get sleepy at night and run regeneration programs. And so when that's happening is when that blue light hits your eyes and your skin actually, but definitely the eyes, it is telling your body that it's noon instead of eight o'clock. And so when you're telling it it's noon, you are getting a rise in cortisol. You are getting a rise in blood sugar, diabetes, um, cortisol that keeps all of your hormones too vamped up all the time. And so then we're running, 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 and the body's always trying to catch up and it creates a circadian rhythm mismatch where your body at eight o'clock should know it's eight o'clock and getting tired to go to bed. And instead you're ramped up. So that's kind of the science behind just a little bit of it, of why that happens and why we kind of get vamped up. And then we think, well, we're just night owls because your body now has gotten used to that new normal, but it's not normal for your DNA. Like night shift workers at hospitals or other night shift workers, I think there's like an increase of 6% chance of uh, for, um, early mortality and also uh, cancer prognosis. And so it's because of the circadian mismatch. Your body's never able to get rid of bad cells or damaged cells. Um, so in your case, now, since it's personal because of what your career is as being a musician, everybody has this problem because we're addicted to the tech at night. Um, but in your situation, it'll just have to be something that you are aware of. You know, you hate to tell somebody to like quit their day job or their night job when it's something that they love to do. Um, I have a client that's a airline pilot and she's amazing and loves her job, but it causes her health issues because of Wi-Fi, because of being up in the air, because of blue light, because of, you know, all the radiation from the plane. Um, she just does a better job now of keeping her circadian rhythm in check as much as possible, seeing sunrise as much as possible. Um, and she doesn't fly quite as much as she used to. And she's able to do that with a husband and family and, and working it all out. Um, in your situation, it's just something you have to be aware of and where you can biohack and where you can bring more stuff in to keep your health really, really optimal. Um, again, if you could start doing concerts like outside, <laughs> you get a bonus there um, during the day outside, like optimal. Um, if it does have to be at night, then I would definitely start probably wearing some blue blocking glasses while you're playing. Like most musicians can get away with pretty cool, like trendy wardrobe parts. So at least then you won't be like the weird guy with red lenses. You're gonna be like, Hey, I like those red lenses. Those are cool. Like we need some of those. Um, so I definitely suggest that. And then if you can space out like your gigs, if it's possible, you know, if you play on like a Thursday night, then spend Friday and Saturday getting as much light as you can. Um, cold therapy and cold plunges are going to help your body help um, heal and regenerate faster. Um, even Dr. Jack Cruz, he was a neurosurgeon for a long time. And when he got into all this information, he was still doing surgeries. Well, if you go into a surgery all day in a hospital, you're surrounded by Wi-Fi and radiation and blue light. And so he would do a full day of surgery and then he would spend three or four days of the weekend doing, you know, hot and cold plunges, doing um, as much light as possible, you know, as much seafood as possible, and just try to um, re-engage all of those circuits to be better and stronger, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> um, yeah, and I I just got a pair of blue blue blockers off Amazon. I don't know; how, they're not the most stylish. They're not clear, right? No, they're like 
they are yellow. Um, they they actually kind of have like a a brief. I don't know what to say. Like a, it kind of refract refracts the light on the surface. But um, yeah. With with that, I did want to ask you, like in in a situation like this, um, where throughout the week I am or have been for the most part trying to get up and do what you're saying at sunrise and get up sit in the grass with my feet bare feet and like yeah. let the lead right or let the red light hit me but like say for this week like i have like a late night show thursday and then a late night show saturday like my question is in those situations where you have to break the cycle is it is it recommended like i'm assuming it's recommended to just like get less sleep that night and still get up early in the morning i'm wondering what your thoughts are on like situations like that where you have to mess with the cycle and should you get up and take a nap in the afternoon or something and like what's the best way to kind of like deal with those bumps in the road like that yeah so the answer will always be like you need to see sunrise because that's the only way to like turn on all the clocks for the circadian rhythm and tell your body like it's morning now i have heard dr jack cruz tell people like in these kind of situations i mean it's still not optimal but get up and see the sunrise for 15 20 30 minutes as much as you can even if you're tired and you can go back to sleep i wouldn't probably recommend going back to sleep for like six or eight hours because i think that will confuse the body but if you need you know another hour another two maybe um i think that would be okay and i think if you're only doing that once or twice a week i think that'd be okay if you can try to push it and do the sunrise and stay up and then do like a nap later in the day or something like that i think that's um i think that's fine too yeah um it also gets me thinking about <clears throat> i mean i'm 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 just kind of asking you personal stuff. Cause this is like, this hits home for me and hopefully it's helpful for the people listening to. Cause I, I just know like a lot of people work in, in the industry, like the service industry and yeah. it, it turns into like, you become like almost like an alcoholic and a cokehead if you don't like watch out. But um, what are your thoughts on like, <laughs> I'm just going to throw it out there. What are your thoughts on weed and um, coffee? <laughs> because weed and coffee. <sighs> Like I, 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 I've been trying to drink coffee. Upper and it's your downer. Yeah. It's your upper yeah. and it's your downer. I totally get it, dude. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I'm only going to come from my personal experience and aspect on this because obviously again, with all of this, um, it's N equals one. Right. And so you have to know like discernment for your own body and what your body feels like and how it's doing. If you're not doing well on something that you're doing, you got to change it. Um, now the light and sunrise and all that is always going to bring you benefits, but if you're sick and you have a disease, you're going to need more of it. You, you might need some supplements for a little while. You might need some vitamins and medicines for a little while. Um, but if you stick with the light, those things will dissipate and you'll be able to get rid of them. Coffee and marijuana. Um, definitely two friends of mine. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think with anything in life, uh, you got to enjoy life. I think anything that is good can also still be bad. So too much of anything, whether it's good or bad, can be bad. It can create a, a vice. Um, I had to go off. Actually, when I got Lyme disease and decided to heal, I came off of everything, which, you know, I had some coffee and I would smoke every now and then. I definitely didn't smoke every day. Um, but I came off of everything just to give my chance, my body the chance to heal and not have anything that it had to process extra um, I had started to realize I wasn't doing very good with caffeine and coffee. Like it was kind of bringing me up and had some weird like lymphatic and detox issues. So now I'm capable of having coffee, like, you know, a couple times a month when I meet some friends. Um, I have still noticed if I have it every day, it really ramps me up. Um, and so I actually try not to have it every day, but there are some great um, replacements out there. There's like a dandelion coffee blend that, it's not exactly like coffee, but man, once you add like your honey and your cream, like I can't tell a difference. Um, so that's really great. And um, also with most coffee from what I've read, if you do handle it fine, and I think there's some really great health benefits from coffee. I think the best thing to take away from coffee are two things. Number one, you want it to be organic. Most coffee nowadays is sprayed with glyphosate and has a lot of fungus and mold just between like the travel and storage and roasting and all that. So I would definitely recommend spending the money on something organic. Um, and then number two, not drinking it without food in the morning. So that was also one of my bad faults because 
I didn't wake up at the sunrise, so I was never hungry. So I did intermittent fasting. So I never ate till like one or two o'clock in the afternoon, but I would get up and I'd have my big old cup of joe. Well, all that does is add on more cortisol and more adrenal fatigue because you're just having the coffee by itself. And so now if I am going to have coffee, I always make sure I eat it with my meal that I'm having in the morning. Um, and that would probably be my advice on the coffee with marijuana. It is such a touchy subject. I think there's huge medicinal and beneficial factors from it. Um, mental factors too, you know, especially if you're going to stay off of other <laughs> more dangerous or hardcore drugs. Um, I definitely personally have nothing wrong with it. It's the same thing. I can't smoke it every day. Like if I smoked it every day, I would be a couch potato pothead. Like definitely I would have no initiation to do anything. Um, so there are times that I use it personally. Like if I have a really bad headache, I don't want to take time at all. I can hit the bowl or hit a joint and my headache's gone. And then after 10 minutes, I have no side effects and I feel nothing the next day. And it's great. Um, so in there, I would still use discernment. I, and just see how your body's doing with it. And sometimes it is really great to just take out everything for a little while when you're starting a new habit, if you can, and then start incorporating each thing like every week and then see how the body responds. Um, I think that's a really great way too, of just seeing how something's affecting your body when it's been like the norm for so long. Yeah. It's interesting. Um, over the spring, like, I guess it was like the late spring. Um, I moved from, I was living in the mountains in Colorado and then moved to Denver. So I left like a really surrounded by nature, yeah. natural environment to concrete jungle. Um, and for about a month and a half, I quit weed and coffee. Um, and honestly, after a month and a half of it, I had a, the problem where I would dream so hard and wake up at like every night at like two in the morning from a dream, not like a cold sweat nightmare, but it would just be like, I would, I would like wake up and then couldn't fall back asleep for like an hour, hour and a half. And that was really messing up my, um, sleep. So that's just kind of my issue. Like I, I feel like just having a, this, this is revealing a lot, but having like a little bit of THC in the system, tones my dreams down so it doesn't wake me up in the middle of the night because I mean it was a month and a half usually people are like oh you'll be like totally detoxed from like the weed I don't know that was in your system or whatever like you would actually pass a drug test but even a month and a half later it was just like the dreams were so vivid and I was ne I felt I really felt like exhausted and not like I was not getting enough sleep now maybe if I was I, maybe if I was getting up at sunrise or something it'd be yeah. a different story, but that it's, it sucks because I like, I, I didn't miss being stoned. I would smell the smell of it and be like, that smells like tarry, like nasty crap. But I missed sleeping through the night, which sucks. Yeah. So with that, there's like a lot of questions that we could look at that might not have anything to do with coming off of the pot. Again, if you were waking up at sunrise at that time, you might've been tired enough that you would have slept through the night anyway. So that would be my first go-to on that thought process. Um, number two, obviously, if you were still doing your you know, music gigs and stuff like that, your body was kind of used to some nights being up that late or not and being stimulated. So it just stays up. Um, that would be the second question. Number three, it could have had to do with like your new environment as well. If you're going to be more in the city, it's going to be more densely populated. So you're getting more Wi-Fi signals, more radiation, more... Um, uh, what's it called? Like the ambient lighting from the street lights and things like that. Um, that could be interrupting your sleep. The dreams are cool and interesting, which means like, was the smoking pot from before, was it holding a lot of that stuff back emotionally? Um, cause I will give a caveat, even though the light will change your life and make you so good and so healthy. Um, if you're also not dealing with your emotional shit, <laughs> it's still going to come back to bite your ass. So, um, but you'll have the energy and like this, uh, clearing and clarity from the light to start digging within and, and dealing with that. And it'll be, it will be more manageable and not stressful and depressing. Like it has been in our life. Right. If that makes sense. And so there could be a lot of different concepts there for you to try. Um, you know, obviously getting up at sunrise every morning, it makes you tired at night just because you've been up so long. So it might be a difference there to help with the sleep. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It, it, it it's, um, I feel like I'm going to do it again sometime soon. Cause I usually take breaks from, from both coffee and weed. Like, I don't know, like usually like a month off, like three times a year. Yeah. And, um, but every time I do it, 
you know, it's, it's, it's not like nightmares. It's not like an intense dream where I'm in a cold sweat. It's literally just like so vivid that when I wake up, I'm like, where the F was I? And so with, with all that aside, I, um, I kind of wanted to backtrack a little bit when you were talking about loss of vision too, um, because I also wear contacts, I wear glasses sometimes, and I'm always wondering, like I even see on the the package of the contacts, it says UV blocking. So is it, I mean, knowing that the, that your contacts are blocking out certain frequencies of light, do you have any thoughts on, um, you know, getting your eyes exposed to the light contact free and is there a way to regenerate, regenerate your vision? Because it would, I, I'm totally with you that optometry is such a scam and I'm so sick of not being able to order no. new contacts <laughs> without going to the doctor and paying them. And so any thoughts on um, just the vision and how all like that fits in with this? Yes. So kind of what I already talked about before, as far as what our ancestors did and that it's not normal for your, your eyesight to go bad at 18, 25, 30, 40, um, you can regenerate your eyesight. Like there has been, that's probably been one of the biggest um, feedbacks from people that start sun gazing and start following a quantum light life is that their eyesight gets better. Um, and even when they're using their doctors to like go back and check their vision and stuff, it gets better. Um, even people with like myopia and some really like degenerative um, eyesight problems, like it might not cure fully depending on their age and what they do, but the symptoms do get better. Um, so number one, when you are sun gazing, no matter what time you're going out, you don't want to have sunglasses on and you don't want to have contacts in because they both block any of the wavelengths that are coming but especially the uv in the middle of the day and you need that light to hit your eyes and your skin so um if you need your glasses when you're out doing your sun gazing then i would wear your glasses not your contacts but if you're just going out into your backyard and like sun gazing and hanging out you probably don't need your glasses you know what your backyard looks like and um hopefully you're not that too too blind you know um so that would be my recommendations on that and um if anyone wants to invest in like a red and infrared light panel um that are out and i can offer some examples of good companies for those um sometimes sitting in front of those and doing those once a day as treatment as well can help with eyesight um they can't ever really like legally diagnose or say anything that it will do that but i've known plenty of people to use them and have improved their eyesight as well yeah because um it's not the first time I've heard that it's possible to get your vision back on track. But, um, I mean, my, I, I have like astigmatism and it started, it was kind of very, very mild at the beginning, probably around college. But then I was like, Oh, I think I look cool in glasses anyways. Or like, I like, I didn't mind it. And then it's just like over the course of like a decade and a half or so, like now my eyes are kind of effed. So, yeah. um, so and you're saying remember, like the damage came initially from having too much of like blue light, right? Because like modern windows are fluorescent lights in college, computer screens in college. Um, and then that life continues. So it's the blue light that has been diminishing the eyesight and the lack of the natural spectrum. And so we have to remember when we're looking at that blue light at any point in time during the day, it is diminishing retinol, which is your vitamin A that helps you see. Um, and we need retinol for so many functions in the body. Um, it's also taking away your dopamine, which is like your feel good hormone, you know, and no wonder we've seen rises in children, depression and children's suicide and suicide in general and depression and mental health issues in general. Um, it's taking away all those feel good hormones. Um, and so, yeah, same with the eyesight, you know, it can start as something young, um, usually from just the constant blue light that we've now been exposed to in our indoor lifestyle. Yeah, it, it definitely makes sense. And even thinking back to um, when I was in high school, like from fresh freshman year forward, I had a, I, I was in high school in like the early 2000s. And I had a desktop computer in my bedroom. And, and I would like sit on forums and, and like random like old internet, but I was still um, oh, yeah. doing that every day. And like, that's really in high school when my night owl nature came forward and now looking back i'm just like god like all of this is it's it's you don't think about it as like a toxic like addictive thing but it's it's so normalized and i really feel like the younger kids um who are in their 20s or teens or younger like 
they're re- they're they're doing classes on Zoom. They're doing all of this stuff on the screen, and like, yeah. I think it's just being normalized and accepted, even though it's like, it's almost like lethal. So, yeah, it's killing us. It really is. Um, even when you look at like, some people would say, oh, well, heart disease and cancer are number one, number one and number two killers. Um, medical errors number three, by the way. <laughs> yeah. um, but you can still rely, you can still tie in the cancer and the cardiovascular disease to a light story because, you know, like, for example, most heart disease problems um, start from like high cholesterol, right? Or that's what people say, or high blood pressure. Um, and nobody's telling people that the light outside and our bodies have a natural program tied in to naturally lower your blood pressure and naturally lower your cholesterol just with light. So the UV light in the middle of the day that I talked about earlier. Um, it uses cholesterol to actually make vitamin D. So also if you're not ingesting cholesterol, which now they're trying to push people away from, um, your body can't even use the source that it needs to, to make vitamin D. And we know how many people have like chronic low vitamin D levels and get sick. And especially in the last two years, everything we've been dealing with with COVID. Um, So that's just one example. And then like with blood pressure, so many people, you probably know too, are put on statins, which have really horrible side effects you can't even eat a grapefruit when you're on a statin like um but the nitric oxide that builds up in our veins which is what causes us to have high blood pressure happens because we stay inside the uv light also affects the body by releasing nitric oxide so you can literally have low blood pressure by just being outside um and not having to go on any of that medications and so it is a really sad state that we're in because so many issues and symptoms that are caused uh, by man-made products and modern technology. Um, Big Pharma comes in and tries to supply us with a solution with a pill. And that just gives us more side effects that we have to have another pill for. And it's a really vicious cycle of never getting better, never being able to tie into our own bodies and learn how we feel or how we heal. And your body always wants to heal. If you give it the right environment, it will heal. and so that's why it's so important to share this information and get it out as much as possible. Yeah, it, it really, it really grinds my gears, but just be, especially just the basic things, like the fact that you can't buy incandescent bulbs anymore. Yeah. Like that was, that pissed me off from like an aesthetic point of view yeah. early on, because I would go in certain houses. I'm like, this is like a Walmart. Why or do you have this in your home? Yeah. And they've done a better job at like making like soft white bulbs, but you're saying that those are all still a hundred percent blue, blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's even like you go to, I mean, if you're, if you're working a nine to five in a, a cubicle, you're under fluorescent lights. If you go to a gym, the gym has fluorescent lights. Um, And it just really bothers me that it's almost like a legalistic thing or like a, a green movement thing to be like, Oh, incandescent bulbs are not eco-friendly. So have this toxic inorganic, like um, just horrible thing that we're going to force down your throat for this green movement, which is supposed to be, or when I, when I originally thought of the green movement, it was like crunchy or granola, hippie dreads, organic, like natural stuff. Now it's literally like transhumanist. It's like, alien it's and it's like there's so many um things that that make me think of the bigger picture of just like this we're talking about nature versus artificial almost like transhumanism which is kind of like pushing it out very far but it's all kind of in the same wheelhouse if you ask me just like how toxic and inorganic even with the vaccine even with the lifestyle that's being pushed of like ipad babies and zoom learning like don't don't smack the green label on that or or anything because we're talking about organic versus artificial and all this is like so incredibly artificial and like we've got to do something about it soon yeah it's it's not a pretty picture and as much as people struggle to know the fact but like the elites or whoever you want to call them the top government officials the ones that are making the decisions on all of this like they know it's not it's not an oops accident like they know about this big tech has copied it from the casino lines um 
wireless companies know how dangerous 4G and 5G is. It's just they've shut it up and they've spent money to keep it quiet because there's trillions of dollars in big pharma and medical and big tech and big cellular. Um, now, look, as far as for everybody on the call, too, like I'm not coming after your doctor or your nurse. Like that's what most people get really offended and triggered by. Um, it's not your doctors and your nurses faults either that they don't know this. They have been institutionalized by Rockefeller medicine. And that took over all of our medical community, as far as universities and the books and the research, they paid for it all to go all towards petroleum based medicine and supplements. There's even supplements on the market that are petroleum based, um, and got away with all the things that could have been natural, you know, chiropractic care, massage, herbs, tinctures, nature, light, like all of our previous ancestors were studying and revering and using the sun to heal. Even some of our um, initial founders and doctors in the country, in the United States back in the 50s, were even still using light and sun to heal people. And so it's not an accident that that just accidentally went away. Um, yes, we kind of had a parallel of like electricity being invented and things getting easier and more modernized. That has also just kind of occurred. But the top people that could change things and know things, they know this. And so it's not done by accident. They want us sick and addicted and depressed because then that makes us reliant on the government. Yep. So, Amen. Um, box for today. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you, um, I, you, I, I know you have like tons of, you know, the, the real scientific knowledge, sure. what I'm, uh, and, and you can like go on, you, you can really go deep into anything related to like the science behind sunlight or just light in general and the circadian rhythm. But what I'm kind of curious about is what vitamin D actually is, because I mean, I technically take a vitamin D supplement. I don't even know if that does anything, but I, I don't understand how sunlight itself is vitamin D. And then this thing in a supplement is also vitamin D. Do you have any explanation of that? <laughs> uh, whew, how much time do we have? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So I will try to make that brief and try to make it super understandable. Um, first and foremost, vitamin D is not a vitamin. <laughs> I don't know the answer to how that became and who gave it that label. Um, it's a hormone, just like melatonin. Melatonin is not a vitamin. It's a hormone. Um, our bodies make both of them and should make both of them in plenty. And they create tons of reasons of our systems working appropriately in the body. Um, so like I said earlier, the sun um, can't just shine on you and just like magically make vitamin D. It does kind of happen that way. But one, you have to be in the UV light. So you have to have the middle of the day light to be able to do it. Number two, you have to have cholesterol in your body to make vitamin D. If you don't have cholesterol in your body, <clears throat> vegans, um, you're not going to be able to make vitamin D. So healthy cholesterol is a good thing. Uh, we can even have a caveat, small conversation on the fact that, you know, like blood work and doctors now are telling people to be on very low cholesterol levels, like below 200. Um, women, we cannot make sexual hormones if we have our, uh, cholesterol below 200, like you will head into infertility, you will head into autoimmune diseases and you will head into cancer down the road. Like cholesterol is so, so important for your brain to function well for sexual hormones, all of that. Anyways, back to vitamin D. So you need the cholesterol to be able to make vitamin D. And then also something that they're not teaching us as well is, um, I believe it's 36. There's a guy, Stevenson, that I follow on Facebook that's done a huge, huge studies and dive, rabbit dive on vitamin D. We make like 36 different varieties and types of vitamin Ds. Like when you break it down, like in a chemistry lab, you'll see all these different versions and varieties of vitamin D. And I think it's like 36, 36 different types that our body makes they can't bottle that up and put that in a pill. And even if they tried for all those varieties, which they're not telling us about, I didn't know that till last year. Um, how would you know that you're getting all of them in that pill? And also that's all going to be synthetic. So every supplement, every vitamin, every medicine that we take and ingest has been synthetically made in a laboratory, chemically under artificial light. So there's nothing natural about them at all, even if it's a supplement or a vitamin. There are some times where... I, I wouldn't be able to sit here and tell you dosage or anything. I'm not a doctor, 
I do know Dr. Jack Cruz. I do know other quantum doctors. Sometimes we'll have people go on high dose, high dosages of vitamin D as a supplement initially when they are super sick, super low on vitamin D, just to give the body a little bit of a boost, but it is never a long-term plan. So when you stay on supplements, especially things like melatonin and vitamin D that are technically hormones in our body. Um, if you stay on supplements for that, it's kind of like hormone replacement. Your body eventually accepts the synthetic version as the new normal, but it's lacking all kinds of like chemical connections and things that our body naturally would have done. And our body stops making it naturally. So eventually it's not going to work. And it's also going to kind of set off like mismatches chemically in the body, if that makes sense. And of course the quantum science like goes way deeper and over the head than that, but that's kind of the basis of vitamin d where does it come from how does our body make it and then we need our body to make it and it's not actually really that wise to be supplementing with it melatonin is the same for the exact same reasons yeah i've i've um so would you would now that i'm kind of you know slowly doing the natural way would you recommend um not taking the vitamin d supplement anymore <laughs> well i can't tell you right <laughs> right of course because i'm not a doctor <laughs> Um, if it was me, I would stop taking it. Yeah. But it makes just, sense. I kind of, I kind of knew, I kind of knew I was like, just cause it, it has like a little cartoon sun on the bottle. I'm like, <laughs> it looks like corn syrup or something. Like how <laughs> does this work? Um, yeah. and another thing that, um, I, so I followed your Instagram and see you put some stuff about, um, I guess like meat eating and beef and, um, you know, kind of more of a carnivore style diet as opposed to veganism. Um, and I was wondering if you could speak on that because this, this is all kind of coming full, full circle, but like I went vegan in 2017 and, uh, thought I was getting asthma for like mm. a month afterwards. And I went to, I, this is like how I totally stopped going to allopathic doctors. Like I won't do it anymore, Yeah. but I went to a lung specialist and told her like, I just went vegan, but, um, I I'm having trouble breathing. I it's like a shortness of breath thing. Mm. And she, she literally said, let me go see what samples I have in the drawer. And she just came and like chucked this inhaler at me. And she was like, come back and see me in six weeks. And then I Googled the inhaler and it was like, don't take this. This is going to destroy you, blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. with enough Googling, I realized that it was like a gut issue and it was an acid reflux issue because I was eating like spicy chipotle beans and vegetables constantly and like acidic fruits and all this fucking shit. And it it's like silent reflux where your esophagus swells and you can't breathe. So I'm wondering if you could speak on um, kind of like the vegan thing and how it might not be healthy. And also, you know, the, the benefits of eating a more carnivore diet from your perspective, and you can even throw the gut in too, because this was like a gut health thing. And all of these health things that I'm like, so brought in by are just like trial and error. But um, yeah, I'm wondering if you can talk about those too. Yeah. So this will be kind of another little tangent soapbox uh, to tie all of those concepts in. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. This is all coming from educational purposes of what I've researched and learned and also what I've experienced in my own life of trying all the things. I've never actually went vegan, to be honest. But um, a couple of years ago, I did start doing like a vegan day, like Mondays would be no meat, you know, Mondays mm -hmm. or something. Um, so let's start with the gut and with light, because that is what we're talking about today. And that will kind of help tie everything into kind of more specifics on diet. I really try not to harp on diet so much because it is triggering for people. Um, and everybody is N equals one. So some things do work better for people. And like, if you live down near the equator, you might be able to do better on somewhat of a vegan diet uh, or vegetarian diet, perhaps. And as I tie all this in, that will make more sense. So most people nowadays, if you've tried to look into health at all, you've heard something about like your gut and your microbiome and all of the enzymes and bacteria you have in your gut to help break down proteins and fats and foods and help you have your immune system strong. And that there's a gut brain axis, like they've actually found there's a huge connection from the vagus nerve from your gut to your brain. 
And so the gut is kind of always considered like your second brain is what will kind of go around in health talks. But in research, what I tell people is for every one message that gets sent from the brain to the gut, the gut sends back nine to the brain. So for me, I'm like, who's really kind of the master here? Um, The gut is where all of our immune cells are built up and made. So for your immune system to stay strong and be defensive against viruses, illnesses, bacteria, it's made in the gut. All of our sexual hormones, uh, testosterone, estrogen, pregnolone, all made in the gut. Our microbiome, of course, that helps protect our lining and make everything healthy as far as digestion goes, is made in the gut. Um, And then all of our happy hormones, so like your serotonin, your dopamine, all of those that have you have positive mental health are all made in the gut. So all of that is created in the gut. So for me, like gut is kind of the boss man, okay? And we want to keep the gut healthy. Well, what does the gut respond to? Light. When's the last time anybody's belly was out in the sun? never or maybe one week at the beach so number one your gut needs light as well and it needs infrared light from the morning and it also needs uv light during the day to help create that healthy microbiome for where you're located so when we take in food just like i talked about the full spectrum of light that's outside that sun brings codes of information in things called photons it's just a little packet of energy that's the science part of it comes down and talks to the grass to grow and the plants to grow and seed and the fruit to grow and our animals to grow as well that are eating uh, those vegetables that are on the ground or the grass to also grow their bodies into protein and fat and muscle tissue and organs. And those are codes that are sent to each one of those either plants or animals of how to function and how to go through the day properly, just like us. We should have our circadian rhythms in check, just like the plants do. So because of that, food can also be a light story. Number one, if you're eating food that's been processed in a plant, like a manufacturing plant, it's been processed and it's been made from chemicals and it's been made underneath artificial light. So, you know, potato chips or whatever you want to call it, candy bars or any type of processed foods, even supplements um, are made under artificial light. So first and foremost, you really want to have a diet of things that are made out in the sun, which does include plants and does include animals, right? Number two rule, you want to have a diet that is consisted of local and seasonal foods. So that means you want to be eating stuff that grows within like, like a hundred mile, 200 mile radius, if you can, maybe like a tri-state area for your regions of where you are, whether it's New England or down in the South or out West, um, and then seasonal. So this is the big ticket. When we were living outside as our ancestors were during the winter, if they didn't like, let's take the tropics out of the equation. When they live somewhere where you truly had a winter, what grew outside? Like there's not going to be a lot of plants, vegetables, fruit that grew outside for you to consume. And so their diets would have consisted more of like a carnivore based diet to where they really would have only had animals to be able to kill and eat. And our ancestors ate from nose to tail, like they used the full animal and actually they would eat organs and fats first and foremost before anything and then use the rest of the animal and skin and hide and all of that. We're not doing any of that anymore. Um, organs are super, super beneficial for your health and fats are super beneficial for your brain and your body. It's actually what runs our mitochondria way more, um, way faster and way more efficient off of fat and proteins than it does off of glucose, which all carbohydrates, all sugar, all of that turns into sugar, which is glucose. Our bodies do need it, but our bodies need it during certain times of the year. So if you get into spring and summer where things are growing more like fruits and vegetables, I think it's okay to be able to have those during that period of time. And when winter comes around, depending on where you live in the world, you're going to go more to like a keto based carnivore based diet. Um, That's kind of how I describe most of all of that. It's what our ancestors would have done. It's still what our DNA um, and genes are kind of tied to stuff that a lot of people also don't realize as far as um, plant based Um, plants don't want to be eaten either. Like when we get onto the whole emotional tie, I guess, to veganism versus animal-based diets, uh, everything in the world that's alive doesn't want to die and doesn't want to be eaten. And so all it wants to do is be born and reproduce and keep going. And that means your grass, your plants, your vegetables, and your animals. But we are on the top of the food chain and we also need these nutrients that they make from chewing grass all day long. Um, and so plants, they don't have a defense mechanism like animals where they can run away from their predator, right? Like we can chase an animal and maybe we get them, maybe we don't, but they can run or they can fight. 
plants can't do that. And so plants actually over years of evolving have created internal toxins like oxalates and there's other ones as well, but oxalates are the most well-known in the health industry um, that are toxic to our systems. And so it's interesting that when you switched over to vegan diet, like already within a month and a half, you were having GERD and reflux and acid issues because you were taking in too much alkaline food that had toxins and your body was trying to reproduce extra acid to try to digest that stuff when it's not used to consuming that. And so as a caveat, I'm not on here trying to preach like you should never eat a salad, never eat lettuce. Um, but just think about the light story with it and just think about where you're located in the world and what would be local and seasonal. If you're in Denver, Colorado in December, tell me a vegetable that's growing. Tell me a fruit that's growing naturally outside. I don't think there's going to be too many. Um, and granted, like most people can't hop on a complete, like total meat-based carnivore. Um, there are some things you can eat in the winter that like, like squashes, um, olives. There's a couple of things that I think would still be okay to include in your diet. It's still going to be limited. Um, but if you're really wanting like the ultimate, the optimal diet tied in with your light, that's what it's going to be. Um, you'll want to bring in a lot more seafood into your diet when you're in those areas, just to keep, um, seafood helps has the DHA. DHA in it. And it basically helps our electrical current that we have in our body run strong. And so in the winter, when you have less sun to help you do that, no UV light, um, that's where you can implement uh, eating more seafood to help kind of bring that in. Hopefully. That yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, it gets me thinking too about like fermented foods because um, even if like, well, if you, if you can't grow food, in the winter, obviously, I, I, I think, um, you know, back in the day, they used to pickle stuff and jar stuff too. And I've been trying to eat, like I eat like kimchi and sauerkraut now. And it, that's not something that you, I would automatically like, mm, yum, this is good, but you kind of get kind of a, not addicted to it, but you kind of like get acquire a taste for it. And it's kind of like a reaction that you can feel. Um, and to bring it back to my story about, getting acid reflux that literally was like chronic. And for like long after I got off the vegan thing, I could not breathe very well for a while. And one of the things that I found was water fasting. And that's literally the only thing that, that helped. So I, I don't know if you have any information or thoughts on fasting or intermittent fasting and how this fits into like the older overall kind of quantum health that you talk about. Yes. Good questions with long winded Anders. Long yeah. winded Anders. Again, like biggest caveat with some of these questions is we are N equals one. So we're all individuals with individual issues and symptoms. And you really do got to get back in touch with your body and use discernment of what works for you. Fasting, yes, is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's a great method to get our bodies into like autophagy and apoptosis, which are those regenerative methods I talked about that our body runs at night when we're sleeping well and, and making our nights dark and our days bright. Um, fasting can really help us get into those positions even during the day to where our, our bodies are getting rid of damaged cells and cancer cells because it's not focusing on eating anything, right? Like we eat way too much and way too constantly. Um, that our body's so focused on metabolism and digestion that it can't focus on healing or regeneration or growing or having more energy. So fasting can be something that can really, really help people. The downside though, is you just really got to know where you are in your body. Like for me, when I was healing Lyme disease, I realized that I had done the intermittent fasting for so many decades, the wrong way, right? Like having coffee, not waking up in the morning, not eating all my hormones were on the floor. Like the last thing my body needed to do was starve itself because it was already just so lacking in energy. And so I actually ate when I was hungry. I started eating more high fat and high protein and I gained some weight. Like I gained a solid probably 10 or 12 pounds, but your body's going to do that sometimes initially when it needs to heal, especially for women. Like you guys, women out there, you might hate to hear me say that, but I promise you it will come off when your body's healed. You'll get pregnant when it's healed. Um, and so initially I had to take some time off from the coffee, from the things, from fasting. Now that I've healed myself more, I have better hormones. I have better energy production. Um, I can do some fasting. I still don't really recommend it as like a daily thing. I think it can be too much of a shock to your system. If you think about our ancestors too, they would have had some times where they had like a lot of 
feast after they got an animal and then they might have a couple of days of famine in the winter those would be more so to be honest i fast more intentionally in the winter but when you also start following the light cycle of food and eating right so i know we mentioned it before we got on the recorded call um that you had just had dinner and it was really early and one of the things with quantum light life is you're you want to try to eat before it gets dark as well or, or right at dark um because you want to give your body those three to four hours before going to bed to get through all of its digestion so it does go into autophagy and apoptosis while you're sleeping instead of focused on digesting food and so let's say if you finish eating by six seven o'clock you sleep all night doing your regenerative programs you're going to wake up for sunrise at 6 6 30 wherever you're located in the country and then if you end up eating 30 minutes to an hour after you wake up which i recommend you've already had a 12 hour fast so if you actually get on that cycle, your body is already having a pretty natural fasting cycle. And I think for some people, they can push that out to 14, 16. Men are definitely capable physiologically to do it better. You guys have like basically testosterone. We have three other hormones going on that we have to focus on. Um, but I still don't really recommend it for something to do large extensions of fasting for a long period of time. You know, I think every now and then to do like a two day fast or a three day fast um, is fine. Uh, just not making it something super consistent all the time. Yeah. When I was looking into it, I was trying to, what well, some of the benefits I heard was, was just like after, after maybe two days or three days, the lining of your gut like resets. And, um, and that's why they were saying when you're done with like a three day fast or something, the first thing you should eat should be like bone broth or something with like collagen in it. So um, I, I really haven't had the, um, the, what, what's it called? The breathing problem and the GERD anymore, but Good. honestly it was, uh, it took a, like, I thought it was like, it was, it felt like a chronic, like serious thing. And then funny enough, when I got COVID, um, suppose COVID, I tested positive for COVID like early on. And I don't know if that spiked it up because I was like eating really shitty and staying and staying inside. It was in the winter and I, I had breathing problems again. Um, but I thought at that time it was like a COVID thing. So I was actually kind of freaking out because I thought it was like a lung problem. Yeah. Then, then I did another fast and it kind of slowly went away too. So it's, it's just interesting with all these health things, like um, even in my, uh, in astrology, like there's the 12 houses of the Zodiac and the sixth house is considered like the health house or the daily routine house. And my, my personal chart has some stuff in that. And, and basically my, like I came into this, or like my early young attitude was like the, the most like carefree, like I could care less about the gym. I could care less about health and nutrition, but the older I get, it's like, this is almost like a calling. It's like the, the, it's like once you kind of wake up and you have to heal yourself from something that's like really debilitating, you're like, oh shit. Like yeah. everybody is kind of in the same situation and maybe they don't have a chronic problem, but we're all kind of dealing with the same just toxic lifestyle and just like artificial, inhuman, inorganic lifestyle that to me in these, these past two years with like the pandemic and everything, like, it really feels like an ag agenda of death and poor health yeah. in the name of health or in the name of green or whatever. And um, it's, it just literally seems like the conspiracy. If we're talking about conspiracies, like this <laughs> is the conspiracy. Yeah. They did a good job. They did a real good job getting people scared of death, which we all have coming. Like none of us make it out of this alive. <laughs> um, but I, I was just talking to somebody about this earlier today. I, I do hope that when we have these events and these traumatic things that happen to us, whether it's on our individual level and in our family or on like a huge global scale, like with this pandemic, there's so many beautiful things that have actually come out of it that I don't think they were expecting. Um, like the amount of people that are moving out of cities and getting farmland is phenomenal like probably close i mean if somebody could get real numbers probably close to like the california gold rush you know back in like the 1600s and the amount of people getting chickens or trying a farmer's market for the first time um 
people that now realize they don't have to be in their office at a cubicle for 60 hours a week and they can spend more time with their families. Uh, more people that have opened more like in-home businesses, you know, so that they can be close to family, but be empowered to have their own business. Um, getting outside more, doing things outside because we didn't have an option to do anything else. And so I almost feel like the plan has kind of backfired on them. And I have that hope in humanity. Um, but I do know that, yes, the majority of people are sick and tired and they don't know how to get out of that vicious cycle, even if they know to quit their job. But if they're still stuck to the light and they don't know the light story, they have no way of empowering themselves and allowing their body to heal themselves. And that's why for me, like I felt like it was just something that the universe or God brought to me for my healing. And then how could I, how could I not share that? Like everybody needs to know this information. And now anybody that gets any type of light healing information, it's almost your, it's almost your duty to like share it with other human beings. And even if you don't understand like the full science or know everything, if you can literally just say, Hey, like you need to see the sunrise every day. Cause it makes you healthier. Like some people are going to be like, what? That's so silly. But what if they try it? What if they start feeling better? Um, and so even just getting the point across of seeing the sunrise and making your nights dark is already going to help somebody so much. Um, and when people start feeling better, like they do better, you know, and um, I think that's how we get out of this matrix. So <laughs> here we are. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Um, I wanted to open it up to to kind of go more into the woo woo territories of the spiritual imp implications of all of this. Um, do you have any thoughts off the top of your head of just like how spirituality and God, if you want to call it that is connected to light and connected to what we're talking about, this type of holistic quantum health? Um, this is still a, a part of the subject that I'm experiencing and kind of just being curious about myself and again with everybody we all have different religions we all have different beliefs we all have different spirit spirituality and different journeys in that um so this is just coming from my experience um and i was raised really really strict christian um as a kid and so lots of rules lots of regulations with no reasoning behind them um it was just what the dad said what the bible said and what god said you know and no other reasonings and so I rebelled pretty good about that after I got out of the house. I didn't become like devil's spawn or anything, but I was like, mm, that's not for me. And I just never really came full circle back to anything. I've kind of done my own spiritual path. I really love astrology. Um, I love the connection to nature. I always have. So I think I've always known that there was something there, but like on the Christian side, if you go into that, they're like, oh my gosh, you're a witch, <laughs> you know, which is just so silly because on that side of believing the Bible per se and God, like God made all of this. God made a marijuana plant. God made psilocybin mushrooms. Like God made the trees. God made the grass. And so for me to see all that, like my church is going hiking every Sunday. Like I love that. And I feel more at home than I feel anywhere else, including a church for sure. And even if you look at maybe the side that doesn't believe in like Bible or God or Christianity or religion and looks at more like evolution senses. So let's say we all started with a big bang. Well, what is that? That's a light story some type of colliding chemical or molecule that made a huge amount of light UV that then just created the world and created things to come to life on the planet and has only continued to do so by the evolutionary story um, of creating light. It's the bacteria that's in our bodies called mitochondria. They're a bacteria that literally led to us getting feet that do feet things and hands that do hand things and our hair and our hands and our eyes um, and so even from that standpoint, you could look at that when we have a soul that enters into the egg for creating a baby, there's a huge spark of zinc and the molecules that come in of that soul entering that egg. And that's a light story, right? And um, there's one doctor actually called Dr. Courtney Hunt. I really like her because she's a quantum doctor. She's a doctor. Yeah, I, know, I know her. Yeah. Okay. And she really tries to tie in like this quantum health stuff to understand, but also brings in a lot of esoteric um uh theories and analogies and she will go back to like bible verses and everything and it's kind of interesting i mean she has the perspective of the sun is the son of god but it's the sun and um i don't know why but like that just clicks like it makes sense to me um and all of our previous ancestors like they worshiped the sun and they knew it because it created life on the planet and created life within them and fed them and took care of them and healed them. 
So like, why wouldn't you? Um, and so, yeah, I, I don't have like clear scientific answers for that question. I just know that the more time I've spent in the sun, the more my consciousness has opened, the deeper I've been able to get with some of my own self inner work. Um, not as much anxiety, not as much uh, depression. I, I didn't have a ton of that, but I've always been a pretty positive person, but there was still a lot of like sometimes anxiety and overanalyzing and over worrying. And a lot of that is just a lot calmer now. I feel more of like, this is my life and like everything's tied into energy and what I put out is what's going to come in. And I've been blessed in the last two years, like way more than I ever thought, especially with COVID and everything going on. And I don't know what else to say, except that I'm just out spreading the light. And I think there's that magnetic, energetic um, connection with that. And I think you will have a stronger connection with that when you get back to the light and connect to nature. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It's, um, it's really interesting. And I'm with you on like the nature part. Um, I think a lot of people can relate to that. And that's kind of what a lot of people's spirituality is these days. I mean, it, it's kind of just literally stepping outside of the, the hamster wheel situation. And, and just in the case of um, kind of doing what you recommended, which is like, get up, sit outside, maybe with your shirt off, like, as the sun is rising to get the red light, red light therapy. I mean, just a <laughs> my observation of it in doing it this these past two weeks or so is it just reminds you that you're you're on planet Earth. And I mean, literally, you're when when I'm out there in the morning, the sun is on one side of the yard. And then when I'm back out there in the evening, it's on the other side of the yard. And it actually it sinks up like the, the, the length of the day, it sinks up just the daily cycle. And then when the sun is actually down, it gets dark out, like you are ready for bed. And, and it, it makes, it makes the entire day more sacred for some reason, because I mean, so many, so many times in my life, I've just, I mean, I've, I've lived a very toxic life over the years, one way or the other, we all <laughs> as we, have. As so we, all have. we all have. Yes. And it's just like, usually you're just like waking up and it's like, I'm going to get fired if I don't rush. And like, it's like this, like fight or flight thing. You don't even like, you don't even think twice about where within the arc of the sky, the sun is. And it's also really helped me as an astrologer too, because like the wheel of astrology, the upper half of the wheel is what's visible. And even when you were saying, oh, when it's at 30 degrees, I'm like, that's the, the, the 30 degree mark is the mark between the 12th house and the 11th house. Then when you go another 30 degrees, you're in the 10th house. And like the symbolism, like it, it really is tying things together because when I'm reading a chart, I'm saying like the sun's at this part of the sky. Like if, like if you were born at lunchtime, like you're, you have the sun in the 10th house at the top of the sky. And I can explain it in like in terms of the wheel, but actually living it and being like, Oh, it's, it's like, uh, eight o'clock in the morning. Like the sun is basically going into the 11th house now or the 12th, like from the 12th yeah. to the 11th. So it's just like to give feedback on like the advice that I've taken from you. Like it really makes things, I mean, it makes things feel more sacred and nature is sacred. And like all of our problems are mostly just man-made problems from artificial things. And yeah. we're at like peak artificiality right now. And yeah, the, the, it, I, I really see a future in this being like a spiritual practice or not a religion, but like yeah. the only way not to be miserable, the only way to not be like depressed and want to kill yourself. Like you have like just basic stuff, like stepping stepping out of the matrix stepping out of the blue light matrix and just being back in nature like when you're up at sunrise i literally see like like horny squirrels like right when the freaking sun comes up and it's like oh yeah like this is where we are we're on earth and this is um beautiful and sacred sorry that was kind of a rant but no i love uh, that thank you for sharing and it's very cool to tie it into the astrology because i mean that already just shows you that's what our ancestors and prophets and all of them like that's what they were doing um there's some guy out there i can't remember his name now i heard him i think on greg or on tinfoil hat but 
he's taken like the whole Bible and like tied it back into astrology. And he thinks the Bible is actually a whole telling of like what changed in the sky, like um, via our like constellations. Um, Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I don't know like how much breath I give it, but it was cool to hear the perspective and some of the proof that he kind of had. And it was, you know, they, it was their only ways of being able to keep record of famine and feast and um, natural disasters. And then obviously our sky changes at different parts of the location of the world. So, you know, we forget that we're so busy nowadays. They didn't, they didn't, (laughs) they had lots of time on their hands, you know? And so to study those things and connect it, but to now make that connection now is what's the beautiful thing, I think. And so, no, thank you for sharing that. I, it'll be, a, everybody will be amazed by the different downloads and the different connections that you'll have once you're spending your time outside. And that's sunrise time is like sacred. It's my favorite time in the whole world now. And it's my non-negotiable, like whether I'm dating somebody or family members or vacationing, like I am up at sunrise and I am walking for 20 or 30 minutes and I say my prayers and my meditations and like, it's just. I love it. I'll, I'll never get rid of that for the rest of my life. Yeah. I mean, I, I just turned 35 and I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to say when you're at your prime, but I'm like, at least I'm into this stuff now. Cause if I had the same attitude when I was 25, as I am at 35, I would probably get cancer or have a heart attack, you know, cause it, it really is it's something that like, as you get older, you want to just like implement this stuff and actually like make, you know, I still have a lot of time, but like you want to, you want to make your older years where the diseases would be coming up. uh, You want to avoid that. And just, yeah, I think I, it's, it's just crazy because I'm doing this stuff really connects a lot of dots. Like even just as recent, like the most recent change I had when I moved to a city and my circadian rhythm got screwed up and I straight up got depressed, like basic stuff, like just getting up in the morning for the sunrise. I have this backyard in Denver that just has basic plants everywhere, basic trees. It's a big fenced in yard, but even just being able to like ground to the earth and do basic stuff like that is like the total difference between I don't know, sleeping in and then waking up and just kind of like, it's like the difference between being alive and kind of being a zombie. So um, I don't think you could say any better than that. That is exactly what it feels like. Yeah. So we're getting kind of towards the end of this chat. Um, Do you have any practical advice if people are listening to this and they're like, all right, I want to take Jackie's most basic advice and start implementing it on a daily basis what kind of advice would you like to share um so yeah uh sunrise like no matter what sorry y'all is always number one like it's the only way to turn on the clocks in your body um get your circadian rhythms going get your hormones made for the day like sunrise trumps everything um and so that also means no sunglasses no contacts when you're looking at that sunrise um 10 to 15 minutes again if you're sick like dosages and stuff like this is all going to be more but just basic simple techniques 15 20 minutes um as much skin exposed as you can no sunglasses no contacts throughout the rest of the day try to go take sun breaks if people take cigarette breaks you're taking a sun break Um, Go out every hour, hour and a half, try to get as much skin exposed and your eyes exposed as well to that sun throughout the day as that natural spectrum is changing. Um, And then again, at sunset, before it gets dark, make sure you're getting out and getting that infrared light as well on skin and eyes. Um, Try not to eat or try to eat by the time that it's going to get dark. And then at night, you need your nights to be dark as possible. So that means no blue light, which means no LEDs, no fluorescent light bulbs, no tech screens, which is your TV, your laptop, your Apple Watch, your iPad, all the things that are tech. Ways to get around that if you need to use them, buy some good blue blocking glasses. If they have clear lenses, they do not work. They have to be orange or red. And I have companies that I can tell you about to refer you to. Um, You can put a red screen over your TV, like that silicone stuff. I forget what it's called. Um, there's a program on your laptop called Iris. It's a one charge $40 that will actually change your screen throughout the day. And so at night, it's a red screen that you can use to work off of. And then on your phones, if you go to YouTube and re- and just look up um, shortcut to turn my iPhone or Android number, whatever you have, 
uh, screen to red. There'll be a free little video that shows you how to make a shortcut on your phone that you can turn your screen to red and just use that at night. You can use candles, you can use fire, you can buy incandescent light bulbs. You will not be able to find those in stores nowadays. I get mine off of Amazon. Um, any type of LED or fluorescent light bulb will only emit blue light. And it also has a flicker, which is a whole other thing, but affects us physiologically as well. Um, and that's really it. Again, on diet, you want to have a local seasonal diet that's full of fat and proteins. Stay away from seed oils because they are inflammatory. They will make you burn. Um, and yeah, live life, get a tribe, get people that you want to support and love and hang out with. That's just as important as all this health stuff. Um, we we're here to love and be loved and be around people and be social. So find a tribe, try to help each other, make each other accountable. Like, Hey, let's rise. Let's get up at sunrise every day and send each other sunrise photos. You know, um, a lot of times after my webinars, I'll do like a 40 day challenge where I get on Facebook and I post a sunrise picture wherever from home or whatever. They're not always glorious looking, but just to have people check in and hold people accountable, because usually if you can do something for 30 or 40 days, it's a new habit and it implements into your life really easily. And so um, those are kind of my beginning ones. And if you do just that, you will already notice differences in your health. There's certainly more protocols and more things that you can apply. Um, and maybe this is a good time, but I do teach local seminars in my town and in my state. I'm willing to travel to people's places to have these meetings and these seminars at your medical facility, your yoga studio, your hair salon, your children's school, like whoever. Um, I'm more than willing to talk to anybody that wants to listen and share. Um, and then I do give Zoom online webinars. Uh, I'll be holding those once a month now um, so that anybody around the world can sign up. Um, you can come and you'll see my presentation where there's graphics. We get into a lot more of the science, a lot more of the protocols than we covered today. Um, I give references and handouts and discount codes after that as well. Um, and it's a great time to learn about it all. So. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Jackie, for coming on the show today. It's um, it was great talking to you and kind of, I mean, I feel like I shared a lot of personal health stuff, but really that's like, you know, my own, my own journey is what makes me interested in people like you who are like sharing this information. And um, I think it's, it really is kind of revolutionary a, but B it's like pretty practical and it's pretty simple. If, if people just want to, I don't know, get out of bad habits and really yeah. make a difference. So um, for people that are listening, where can they find you and the work you're doing online? Yeah, so I do have an Instagram page. It's Joe Lee in Seoul, but it's J O L I E underscore E N underscore S O L. So Joe Lee underscore in underscore Seoul. And then I do have my website up now, and it's going to be www.lightshapes.life. And there you can find out just more information about me, and then all of my upcoming webinars or seminars or podcast interviews will all get posted there as well. So that's a really good source. You can contact me off of there too if you're wanting me to travel to any facilities to hold a seminar. Awesome. Well, yeah, um, everyone out there, definitely check out Jackie's work. And thank you, Jackie, for sharing it because like when I initially reached out to you, I was like, I did this just for one day and I feel like totally different. What the heck? This is awesome. So I'm um, really grateful that, you know, this is helping me out and um, thanks for coming on today. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me and go shine everybody's light. Yeah, totally. All right.